So this is the, it's gonna be a hatch here to go down below. I haven't finished framing that. Um, this is the back part of the uh, big deck. And it's the rain tanks are underneath. There'll be a gutter put on here that'll come down and connect all of these. And then these tanks will then connect to other ones so that that way they could be pumped around. If these get full, they can go to another place. Then if those are full, they can, you know, so it'll move all around the property. And that way, uh, hopefully there's, you know, 40, 50,000 gallons of extra water all the time. Hopefully, that's the plan. That way. If that's weather coming or it's probably looks like a front coming so I have to keep an eye on that because I opened up all the windows and everything and uh, if that's gonna rain uh, well it's gonna create problems all around stainless steel bolts and some other things that I thought were going to be in this order with the uh, with the wood nope that's I guess a couple weeks still it's like... so it's a constant you know make plans adapt readapt change what you think you were gonna do and, I mean it all gets done but it doesn't necessarily get done the way you originally had it planned. So you just have to be flexible. So as part of my coffee experimentation things, uh, I know not everybody's going to want to take the time um, or you know, has the time or has everything. I mean, I would think a lot of people have, you know, your basic grinder like this, which is just a blade grinder and they have a coffee pot like this and they make their coffee, get up, go to work, that kind of thing. So in that same regard, I just took some um, uh, Nicaraguan beans and ground them up in there, put them in here and we're gonna try this because the coffee has to be good for every occasion, every way you do it to me. Yes, it may be better one way than the other, but it still has to be good, no matter how you brew it. I told you about you know we had the uh, break in over at uh, Potlatch a whole bunch of stuff was stolen wire and uh, numerous items but anyway this is just to let you know that um, and it won't pertain to a lot of people but maybe enough people hear it uh, on here spread the word uh, the owners of the resort are offering a $2,000 reward for the arrest and prosecution 
of whoever or whomever stole it. So remember, that's for the arrest and prosecution. So, and you, you know, I assume you're gonna have to, you know, have a little bit of uh, good pertinent information to uh, get that reward. But still, the, you know, they, they wanna make it known that if you steal from them, they're going to uh, put out a reward and uh, hopefully find, you know, that somebody's going to want to talk because uh, they're going to get a reward. So somebody's lips are going to get a little looser with uh, that monetary reward for somebody doing the wrong thing. And uh, pretty soon the word will get out that uh, you steal from them, they're going to put out a reward, somebody's going to talk, you're going to go to jail. So. Hopefully that does something too. Well, I think I misunderstood. So there is a reward, but it's not 2,000, it's 1,000. <clears> That's still not bad. So hopefully something good comes of that or maybe they'll even get to that before there's a reward. But one way or the other, hopefully they get caught and the stuff gets found. So, you know, there's, and I want to say it's petty crime. That's basically what, what happens here is petty crime. But, you know, um, people have had boats stolen. Uh, there's been uh, construction materials stolen, uh, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, when it happens to you, it's not petty. Uh, but there's no big stuff like uh, murders and all that kind of stuff. It's still one of those things that, as an island, the people who live here and the police need to nip in the bud, dead, don't deal with it. Because it's one of those things that if this problem continues, it's going to hamper the tourist market and thusly happen the hamper the construction market. Because if tourists are coming here, then who's going to be saying, oh, I want to build a house in a Lutheran? It's not happening. So it's really got to be put in check, done, no more thieving. And if it happens, and part of it too, I have to say, you know, if everybody, if somebody came to somebody and said, hey, I got a blah, blah, blah to sell you. You want to buy it for 200 bucks? And they said, oh, yeah, ho. Oh. And then they went and told the police. And pretty soon nobody... Uh, would buy anything, well, who's going to steal stuff just to hide it in the bushes? I don't think so. So it's, you know, somewhat of a two-way street. If somebody uh, is stealing it and somebody's buying it, technically speaking, you know, if somebody comes up to you and they are trying to sell you something for 200 bucks or whatever, and you know the value is way more than that, you shouldn't be like, oh, yeah, I could get that for that price. You should be like, hey, that was somebody else's stuff. <sighs> this shouldn't happen. This, this is just isn't right. And let the police know. The police can take care of it. Everybody's happy, except, of course, the crook. But then, you know what? I don't really care if he's happy. <laughs>